So following is a sculpture form post made to take us through the uh, corona isolation. And it, it takes as its subject the relief sculptures on the inside of the Soldier and Sailors Memorial Arch at the entrance of Brooklyn's Prospect Park. Uh, in the 1880s and 90s, there was a rash of Civil War monument construction. And this is perhaps the most prominent one in New York City. The architect was, I forget his first name, Duncan. He was also the architect of Grant's tomb. Not a terrific architect, and the arch is really clunky. McKim, Mead, and White weighed in at some point on the surrounding area, and it may have been they who proposed uh, Frederick McMoney's for the bronzes. Somehow, very much less celebrated sculptor, William Donovan, got the job of these two reliefs, and he chose Thomas Eakins, Eakins from Philadelphia to supply the horses. Uh, it was not uncommon for a monumental sculptor to delegate the horses to another artist. And Eakins had done very thorough anatomical studies of horses already. So these reliefs, although they're figurative, just like the rest of the monumental sculpture in the arch, they, uh, they are realistic in a sense that the rest of the work isn't. And in the reliefs, thankfully, the subject is enough. Eakins and Donovan are content to let or make Grant and Lincoln, the subjects of the relief, as much as possible speak for themselves, which is exactly what McMoney's didn't do in the rest of the sculpture. The, uh, the president and the general of the Army of the Potomac are each on horseback, which is a vehicle for portraying men of state and victors. The interesting thing is that neither one of them grandstands. They seem to be people who have a job to do and have gone about doing it. It's the reliefs are not entirely unrhetorical. Lincoln drops his hat and looks outward, you know, at an implied audience, an implied review. But there is nothing in his expression that's uh, grand or celebratory. And Grant faces forward. He doesn't look right or left. Our video was shot on a rainy day, and it, both figures seem to, to share time and space and, and weather with the outside world and the viewer. Uh, it's, it's easy to imagine that Grant is, is riding through the rain with his own thoughts on his mind. The Lincoln is a especially good characterization. And there's a standing Lincoln nearby, you know, which is all the usual kind of put on grandeur of the, you know, by then assassinated president. And this, the relief is far more moving. In funny ways, because the work uh, attempts, uh, you know, a very serious, deliberate realism. It's some. It's somewhat almost inartistic. It sometimes lets details speak as themselves. I think for sculpture that deliberately sets about realism or a kind of higher realism, there are real practical pitfalls, one of which is when the details seem to speak for themselves rather than being incidents in a larger narrative, which is deliberately and frankly shaped. The natural counterpart, the kind of shadow image after image as you look at these reliefs is St. Gaudens Shaw Memorial in Boston, which is utterly artistic and I think no less realistic. Uh, the reliefs are kind of funny because they're more or less sculpture in the round, which happened to lean on what's almost a picture plane in bronze, a sort of putty-like surface, which is a pretty good stand-in for uh, 19th century brown sauce in painting. And Eakins was very fond of the brown sauce. He has a, it's almost like a Caravaggio-esque effect of letting something which seems very directly and frankly observed stand against this indeterminate brownish plane. 
and the reliefs have that. Donovan, as an artist alone, is nowhere else an artist of this caliber. The other works we have by Donovan are not nearly as moving. And there is every reason to think that Aikens had a very strong influence, a guiding influence in the subjects and treatment. It's interesting that the, the horses really share in the action. The, the president's horse is tired. He is has pulled back a little bit on the reins, but he doesn't have to. The horse wants to stand still. I think the horse is, is if anything, a little bit over-rendered. Uh, it's that detail issue again. I think as an artistic matter, the legs didn't need to be quite so busy. Grant's horse is far more relaxed. He's moving at this easy walk, which anyone who lived around horses, as everyone did around that time, would recognize. There's nothing uh, proud, there's nothing showy, flashy, strutting in either of the horses or either of the men. And Grant was a soldier who was known to have no interest in military decorations and military fanfare. He wore the simplest possible uniform, the simplest, plainest possible address in conversation and giving orders. Another interesting thing about these two artists and the subjects uh, is that Donovan and Eakins were friends of Walt Whitman. And Whitman saw Lincoln numerous times in Washington during the war, uh, you know, wrote about him, of course, numerous times. And it's in the treatment of both men in the relief, it's easy to see the Lincoln as Whitman portrayed him. He actually has a, a kind of a faint feminine, almost a matriarchal aspect that one reads in Whitman. And the mounted Grant, you know, as plain spoken as he is in character and in treatment, really seems the Grant of his memoirs. The McMoney's reliefs are really just everything that Donovan and, and Aikens chose not to do. They're grandiloquent, uh, unfactual, uh, they share nothing in the experience of war and seem to tune every fiber to a kind of a synthetic notion of glory, which was totally alien to Lincoln and Grant. The subjects on horseback are headed downhill away from the park, and they could be taken to be riding away from something. I mean, to be riding away from the concluded war each in his own way, but in concert with each other as they were in life. Uh, Grant had the utmost respect for Lincoln and took his death very hard. And Lincoln had enormous personal trust in Grant, which he hadn't had in, in his other commanding generals throughout the war. They were a great uh, solace to each other throughout the course of the war. And when Lincoln was facing a, a contested and fairly bitter re-election, he understood that Grant was at his back. 